Previously on True Future, Israel. You know, you come out and mommy was making your sandwich in your bed, and then now suddenly you're sitting in a tank. How many people can actually put a robot at the tip of your finger? Uh, this is my first. Today we're at Tri Ventures, which is at Herzliya. Uh, I'm excited about this. I always love the tech days because the geek in me gets to come out and crawl around the tech. What's interesting about Tri Ventures is they look at healthcare differently, where data is the new oil. And I'm super interested in getting behind the scenes and understanding how they think. So tell me about Tri Ventures. So Tri Ventures is a venture fund focused on medical devices and digital health with the idea to bring the international flavor into Israel to help entrepreneurs at their early stages. Israel has a lot of innovation, a lot of startups, as you know, Startup Nation became a phenomenon, but the market is not here. Eventually, the hardest thing today is not just coming up with the technology, but it's integrating into the healthcare system. Typically, when we're a med tech startup or any startup, a really important resource is money. Right. So when they come to try ventures, that startup not only has access to money, right. but maybe to something more important is data. Exactly. Because historically, companies would have to wait a year, two, three, four, five years to collect that data, burning through money every month, every year but you give them access to that. Exactly. They can get access to the data and accelerate um, uh, the innovation processes. Michal represents, I think, a lot of things that stand out in Israel. Strength, integrity, endurance, intelligence. And, you know, you don't want to say, oh, and it's a female, too. I mean, that's an insult. When people think of Israel, I think the press does it an injustice for one reason or another, pitting people against each other within the country, yet I have not felt any of that. What does the environment feel like in this tech sector? Does everybody play well together? First of all, I'm glad that you bring it up because I do think that a lot of people don't see the nice face of Israel. There is an equality here that is, um, is very unique. We do see people from the Arab sector, from the Haredi ultra-Orthodox sector coming and taking part of this tech community. And I'm very proud to say that um, I'm working with an Israeli Arab Muslim lady. It was kind of funny, I, was, I didn't even know, but I was the first female to start a VC in Israel. You know how I discovered it? Uh -huh. They wrote about it in the paper <laughs> after I did the first closing. And it doesn't I sound think... like it mattered to you. It didn't, you know, you just, you know, like an entrepreneur, you have a mission and you just go. But you have the same mission, that's all that matters. Exactly. Michal and Tri Ventures are obviously mission driven, and they have been a great gateway between the entrepreneurs and the startup community here in Israel. Let's take a step to six over six and chat with the CEO there about a very basic yet profound service in the product platform that they are offering. So tell me about Six Over Six. So at Six Over Six, we bring a good vision to everyone in the world. In the developed world, um, it's an accessory, it's fashion. People right. want to buy eight pairs a year, sure. they want to match it to their outfit and sure. all that. I do that. I do that as well. In the developing world, uh, the problem is people have no access to optometry services. Think about the six-year-old kid mm -hmm. who starts school mm -hmm. and they can't see the board. Mm -hmm. Or think about a young adult who uh, is looking for their first job, but they cannot get a driver's license because they can't see the road. So that's a situation many people around the world are facing. They just have no accessibility to optometry whatsoever. And this actually allows them to get their first pair. And you can do that digitally? We do that over your phone. So basically, all the software that you need is an app so that you can measure yourself. Isn't that fascinating that probably more people have access to a smartphone 
than an optometrist or an ophthalmologist. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually mind-boggling when you think about it. But, you know, an optometrist takes four years to train. Yeah. And in many, many places around the world, they just cannot keep up. Let me put on my glasses so I can see this. <laughs> so basically, I open our app and I choose which uh, test to do. I'm going to check my own glasses parameters so that I can buy a new pair. This is the web address showing on your mobile And then I screen. scan, scan the, QR. the QR. This syncs up Great. my computer phone and my phone. And computer are now synced. Now, take your glasses off. Now it takes all the Tilt your temple arms up environment and parameters Repeat. and basically that maps the script, the prescription? The prescription, yes. And this is a bit of a funny step. Basically, is mm -hmm. taking a selfie with a card for reference. Mm -hmm. And here is my prescription. Wow. This whole flow is yeah. integrated into the website that sells glasses. So you actually start by going online, choosing a frame, uh, and then when they ask you for your prescription, they go, oh, there's an app for that. That's cool as heck. It is cool. So how would I do that if I've never had a script before? So we have another uh, okay. product yeah. that's in very final stages of clinical testing yeah. that actually does a full uh, refraction test. Wow, Same that's way. amazing. Same way. That's amazing. And so is this available today? In a few months, it will be available. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that so sure. much. I really My pleasure. appreciate it. Yeah. These technologies are gateways. What they represent, it could be. So while this is an exam of your eye, we are so close to you standing in your living room and having your TV scan your heart and tell you in two days you're gonna have a heart attack. That is what I see this as. It's the intensity of this country. It's the candid nature of the people. Tonight, I head off to a friend's house to experience home here in Israel. This is my first traditional Seder dinner in Israel. It's special for a number of reasons. Yuval is a 30-year friend of mine. He took such joy in the labor of putting together this amazing dinner. This is always my favorite. That's when I come to Israel, the first thing I do, I chop salad. He is a cross between a warrior, a world traveler, an inventor, businessman, and one of the most generous men I've run across in the medtech industry and he's invited some of his dear friends who are entrepreneurs to share their stories with us. I'm pumped. I have to say that the eggplant, the Baba Kanoos, was up to, based on a special request I received from Amir. Because he liked my Baba Kanoos several times. He said, hey, if you want me to come, make Baba Kanoos. I said, well, I'm okay. So. We're gonna taste it soon. So we were chatting before we sat down about um, military. Has everybody here served yeah. Yeah. in the military? Yeah. Did it change um, your perspective and outlook on things in general? Most militaries in the world, you can't disagree with your superior officer. In Israel, you're encouraged to disagree. As an engineer, I, there's nothing that I did there that I bring to the table, but as a manager, as a leader, everything that, that uh, I do today, I learned there. I think one of the big uh, advantages of, of the military background is the fact that you have a goal and you need to achieve it no matter what. There are designated units, for instance, 8,200, which is the Israeli NSA. And whenever a person says that he served in 8,200 unit, you're accepted. <clears throat> That's it, you get hired. That's it. Depends, you get hired, depends on, depends on the business. Depends right, on what you're right. looking depends for. Depends on the business. You might not put them in HR. No, I, yeah. <laughs> no, a, yeah, but, but, but Right, right. But, but yeah, so, so it, it's that abstract thinking, it's that at all costs, it's that, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so we call that in my team's best athlete. Yeah. Like just give me the best athlete. I don't, I'll hire you as the secretary mm -hmm. or I'll hire you as the CEO, but if you came out of 8200, yeah. and so whoever edits this, I've got a new code word in my company, it's, 8,200 persons. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Try, fail. Try again, fail again. It's such a foreign concept and an unacceptable concept here in our country, America. But the liberation to pursue an outcome maybe is something we all should explore.
totally okay to fail in Israel. Yes. It's absolutely correct. correct. We expect in between 85 to, to 90 percent of the companies <clears throat> to fail. If you take on impossible problems, if you fail, it's just because they, they, they went after a problem that nobody else would dare take. And that's a mindset, though, that's bred in the Israeli culture, because, yeah, again, yeah. there's disruptive, yeah. and then there's dislocation. Yeah. Disruptive is this. <clears throat> yeah. Dislocation is, man, you just started a new yeah. industry. And then yeah. it works. We're, we're, we're rewarded. It doesn't work. Meh. And, and nobody in their community goes, because eh. I will tell you, when I get CVs across my resumes across my desk, the venture capitalists in the U.S., Ah, that company didn't exit. I'm like, but, 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 let's wait. Let's unwind that. Nah, they, they, and stops right there. Take some a mind shift to, to adjust. The first time I moved to the U.S., I came across as disrespectful because I thought if my boss's boss makes a mistake, I, I should point it out. <laughs> no, you don't do that in the U.S. <laughs> You're not going to change the, the culture. In time, they learn, they learn to see the value that we bring with a different perspective, but there are still interesting differences to explore. The U.S. is ahead of us, I think, in bringing more women into the workplace. Are there a lot of women engineers in Israel? It's growing. Not enough. No. One of the reasons, Joe, is, the, I think, is the fact that girls go for two years to the army, then they have to go to university, college, and then they become at the age of, and children have to come. So becoming a mother is, has a little bit of a fact. Why we don't see more female? I think. Hmm. So there's a female here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's a female. She's a CEO of a metal company. Right, right. Yeah. So I would love to have your perspective. I think there's more and more uh, women entrepreneurs in Israel. People in, in a start a startup, one of the main issues is to, to be caring. And I think that women have a strength in this angle. We use the word in the U.S. empathy. 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 We don't know the word. <laughs> <laughs> there was a comment at the table that starting a family. So in the U.S., it's okay now for a woman to be in her 30s and 40s and not have children yet. In Israel, it's, it's getting there as well. I'm 50, and after my kids grew a bit, in the age of 30-something, uh, I switched to entrepreneurship. I have a vision, I have a company, I have a product. So if you want something, you manage everything. You can do whatever you want. And did you find any bias as a female looking for money or looking for financing? At times, yes. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you have to prove yourself more than the usual. But if you're not intimidated, you can do it. So mm -hmm. it, it's like it's a small tackle you have to go through. But there is still some issues about this. You know, you have also to understand in Israel the social structure. You can say there are kind of two main groups. One of them are the orthodox and the very orthodox. The country is highly, highly polarized on this. So if you talk to us, sure, we take female to be CEOs, engineers, pilots, whatever. If you talk to them, no, female have to, have to stay home and to, to cook and to wash the dishes. Look, there's old Israel and there's new Israel. You could be sitting with a bunch of entrepreneurs just outside Tel Aviv discussing business and a female can sit at the table. But just up the block, it's different. And so there's a very, very different handling of gender within the country. At the end of the day, it's a very personal issue. It's independent of gender, and I don't think I would have said that 20 years ago mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. as a younger person. Today was a representation of divergent thoughts, of old and new, of man and woman, and of technology. I think that today gave you the best representation of Israel. Coming up on True Future, Israel. Siri could be listening to my voice to say, there's a signal change in there. Let me send that to my physician. Is privacy overrated? 